Hi, my name is Bon Clifford D. Cernilia and welcome to our tutorial on Game Theory. Game Theory is still under our last video which is Decision Making uh, or the Decision Theory and Game Theory is under the fourth category which is Decision Making under Competition. So what is Game Theory? Game Theory is concerned with the analysis of strategies for dealing with competitive situations. The outcome of a participant's choice of action depends critically on the actions of other participants. Game theory has been used in actually different areas, for example, in war, in biology, in marketing, in economics, and even in supply chain. So there are three elements of game theory or in order for us to analyze a competitive situation. First, we have to have our players or our opponents. Then, we need to have our alternative actions or the strategies for each of these players and the payoff or the consequences if a player would choose a particular alternative action or a, or a particular strategy. We will go on through each one of them as we uh, see one example later. Here, we will be discussing two players' zero-sum games. It means that whatever one gains, one will lose the same. For example, if player 1 has a character Wolverine and then player 2 has Superman, if player 1 wins, he will gain 5 coins. And if player that means that player 2 would be deducted with 5 coins. Thus, it is zero sum game. Okay, so two players, zero sum games. So we will be discussing games with pure strategy and games with mixed strategy here. Let's start with the first one, games with pure strategy. Games with pure strategy provides a complete definition of how a player will play a game. It determines the move a player will make for any situation they could face. So let's see one example. For example, we have player 1 versus player 2. This is our element 1, our players or our opponents. Then, each player has two characters where player 1 can choose either Cyclops or Wolverine and player 2 can choose either Batman or Superman. So these are our alternative actions, okay? So they can choose between the two characters. And then lastly, our element 3 which is our payoff or our consequences. So how does this work? Let's see. So this table is actually our payoff table. And um, basically, or fundamentally, our payoff table, table is actually on the perspective of the player one. So how does this look like? For example, if player one will choose Cyclops and player two will choose Batman, player one would win two points. If player two otherwise would choose Superman, player one would win three points. On the other hand, if player 1 would choose uh, Wolverine and then player 2 would choose Batman, player 1 would win 4 points and if player 2 would choose Superman, player 1 would still win 5 points. So, what we have to do here is to look for the value of the game. So, how do we find for the value of the game or how do we find the value of the game? First step is to do row maximin meaning we have to look for each row the maximum of all the minimums. So let's try. The minimum of the first row is 2, and the minimum of the second row is 4, and the maximum of that is 4. And then next step would be to do column minimax. So minim the minimum of all the maximums for each of the column. That's 4 and 5 for column 1, col column 2. And then we have to find the minimum between the two of them. And obviously, that's 4. 4 and 4, that's equal. So that's what we call our saddle point. If uh, the two values are equal, that is called our saddle point. And if the saddle point is uh, more than 0, like this one, we have a 4, which is our saddle point, this game is unfair. If our saddle point is 0, the game is fair. Why is it unfair if the saddle point is more than zero? Because obviously, if you look at our payoff table, it obviously player one will always win. Whatever player two will choose, player one always wins. So that is actually really unfair. 
Now, let's try with another example. For example, we have two players, Yin and Yang, and each one of them can have two different actions, Yin 1 and Yin 2 for Yin, and Yang 1 and Yang 2 for Yang. And this is our payoff table. So let's find the value of the game. Step number one, row max you min. So find the minimum of each row. That's two and zero. And we find the maximum. Obviously, that's two. And then we do column minimax. So we find the maximum of each column. That's four and ten. And we find the minimum between the two, which is four. So we have different values for each one of them. Thus, we don't have a saddle point. So meaning, each one of the players can mix the, mix up their strategy. So what does that mean? So what is games with mixed strategy? It means that you have to have the assignment of a probability to each of the pure strategy. Then it allows a player to randomly select a pure strategy. So how do we do that actually? How do we assign the probability to each of the pure strategy? So remember, this is our payoff table from our last game. First step is to assign our 2x2 two two matrix. So we have, we have to assign uh, 4 or yin1, yang1 as a11, a12 for yin1, yang2, and so on and so forth. And then we have to find our probabilities. First, in order to find yin1 or the, value, the uh, choice of yin to choose yin1, we have to find that probability. This is our equation. So A11 minus A21 times Yin1 plus A21 is equal to A12 minus A22 Yin1 plus A22. So uh, substituting these variables to our uh, values, we will get this. 4 minus 0 Yin1 plus 0 is equal to 2 minus 10 times Yin1 plus 10. And then reducing it algebraically, we'll get this. And then it will be reduced to 12 times yin 1 is equal to 10. Thus, the value or the probability that yin will choose yin 1 would be 5 over 6. Obviously, yin 1 or the probability of choosing yin 1 and the probability of using, of using yin 2 is actually equal to 1. Thus, since we already have the value of yin 1 and we have to find the value of or the probability of yin 2, yin 2 would be just 1 minus 5 over 6, which is obviously 1 over 6. Thus, there is a probability that yin, the player yin, would use yin 1 with a probability of 5 over 6. Or, yes, that's 5 over 6. And uh, there is a probability that yin would use yin 2 with a probability of 1 over 6. And then, we also have to find uh, the probabilities for Yang. So this is an equation. For, in order to find Yang 1, this is our equation. And then we do our math over here. Then it gives us 2 over 3. So the probability that Yang would use Yang 1 is 2 over 3. And obviously, the probability that player Yang would use Yang 2, that would be 1 minus 2 over 3, which is 1 third. Now, we have the probabilities for each one of them. So let's try a bigger example. For example, we have two players still, since it's a two-player zero-sum game. And then each one of them have four different actions or four different alternatives. And this is our payoff table. Again, what we have to do is to find the value of the game. So row maximin, thus we have to find the minimum of each rows, and then find the maximum, that's two. For the column, we have to find the maximums first, and then we have to look for the minimum, that's 4. Now, we don't have the same value, so we don't have the uh, saddle point. But our equation, as you can uh, recall from our earlier slides, our equation is only for a 2 by 2 matrix. So we have to do the principle of dominance in order for us to remove or to reduce our payoff table to 2 by 2 matrix. So principle of dominance is deleting dominated rows and columns to arrive to a saddle point, if not to a simple matrix of a game. So how do we do principle of dominance or how do we do reduce our payoff table into a 2x2 two two matrix? This is how we do it. First step is to sum the value of the row. So that's 3 plus 6. So for row 1, that's 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2 
is equal to 16, and then we do the same for each of the rows. That's 16, 9, 2, and 12 respectively. Then, we have to delete the minimum. The total, the sum, the lowest or the minimum among the different sum. Obviously, that's row number 3 or the A3, that is, which has a value of 2. So we delete that out. Then, we have to sum the value of the column or the values of the column. So for example, for uh, column number 1, that's 3 plus 0 plus 5, which gives us an 8, and so on and so forth. So 8, 13, 9, and 7 respectively for each of uh, the columns. Then for the columns, what you have to do is to delete the maximum. The maximum here is uh, column number 2 or uh, alternative B2, and that which has a value of 13. So we delete that out. And then we repeat until we are left with 2 by 2. So we start again, sum the value of the row. That's 3 plus 5 plus 2, removing our B2 and removing our B3 uh, row and column. So we have 10, 6, and 9 for the remaining rows. And then we have to delete the minimum, right? So the minimum is 6, or which is the player uh, uh, alternative number 2. So we delete that out. And then lastly, sum the value of the column, that's 3 plus 5, 5 plus 2, and 2 plus 1 for each of the columns. And we have 8, 7, and 3, and we have to delete the maximum. And the maximum here is 8, obviously. So now, we're left with a 2 by 2 matrix, which means player A will only have a choice between A1 and A4, and then player B will only have a choice between B3 and B4. So our reduced um, matrix will look like this. Here, 5, 2, and 2, 1, which is our payoff table. And then now, we have to do our, we have to look for our value of the game. So again, how do we look for our value of our game? It's to do row maximin. So find the minimum first, 2 and 1, and find the maximum. That's 2. And then we have to do our minimax. So 5 and 2 for the column. And then we have to find our um, minimum, which is 2. Now, we have our subtle point, or the value of the game. For my class, uh, for my students, please screen capture this, uh, this page right now and then try to solve it and submit it through our eLearn page. Our last notion for game theory would be Nash Equilibrium. So what is Nash Equilibrium? It is a set of strategies, one for each of the player, where no player has anything to gain by changing only their own strategy. So here, what we want is to look for the equilibrium for two of the players or for each of the player. What action should they take in order for each one of them or for both of them not to take another um, or to change their own strategy. So the very common example here would be prisoner's dilemma. So how does this prisoner's dilemma look like? So here we have two prisoners and two prisoners are already being uh, interviewed by the police officers and they would either they have two actions either they would confess or they would stay silent so again this is our payoff table if prisoner one would confess and prisoner two would confess prisoner one will be imprisoned with four years and prisoner prisoner two would be imprisoned with four years if prisoner one would confess and prisoner two would stay silent prisoner one would go away or be free and if and prisoner two would uh, stay in the jail for eight years on the other hand if prisoner one would stay silent and prisoner two confesses prisoner one would be imprisoned for eight years and prisoner two would be free and then lastly if both of them would stay silent each one of them would be imprisoned only for one year so how do we find our Nash equilibrium or which action for each one of our players would be best in order for them to have the least number of years stayed in the prison? So, step number one is to isolate each action per player. So, let's, act let's isolate the uh, actions for prisoner 2 and find which is the best solution for prisoner 1. 
So for example here, let's isolate action confess for our prisoner 2. So prisoner 2 will only confess and nothing else. So what should prisoner 1 do? Here, if uh, prisoner 2 would confess, uh, prisoner 1 would be imprisoned for 4 years if he confesses as well and would be imprisoned for 8 years if he stays silent. So, we have to choose the better option. Of course, if you will be prisoner 1, you would want the least number of years, right? So, you would choose uh, 4 years of imprisonment. If So, thus, if prisoner 2 confesses, prisoner 1 would want to confess as well. So, what if prisoner 2 stays silent? Prisoner 1 would either go away if he confesses, and he would, if he stays silent, then he would only be imprisoned for one year. So the better option here would be, of course, you wanted to be free, right? So you'd, you would also confess at the same time. So now, let's try um, isolating the action confess for prisoner 1, and let's see what would be the action of prisoner 2. So he would be imprisoned 4 years or 8 years, the better action would be to choose the 4 years or to confess. And then, if prisoner 1 would stay silent, the best action for prisoner 2 would be to confess as well, or to confess because he would not be in prison. So, looking at all of these actions now, obviously, the best action for both of them would be to confess. Therefore, both of them will only be imprisoned for 4 years. But actually, if you look at the bigger picture, the best solution here is actually for both of them to cooperate and be silent because they would only be imprisoned for one year, not for four years. But then, there's since they are not cooperating and one of them is afraid that one would confess otherwise, then the best action or the best, uh, yes, the best action for each one of them would be to confess. So, uh, in general, what we have seen so far are games with pure strategy and games with mixed strategy and we were solving the subtle point we did the principle of dominance and then we showed earlier or the last uh, during our last exercise the Nash equilibrium so thank you very much and this has been the game theory this is Bontley for this Ornelia and thank you for listening have a great day